Welcome back to the give and go. Look guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna be completely blunt with you. I need you to like this video right now. I need it right now. I Please. need you to like this video right now. Subscribe to us right at this moment. Give us a like, give us a comment if you enjoyed today's set of matches because my Lord, do we have so much to talk about. Guys, give us a like, give us five stars on Spotify, five stars on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to our channel, please. Let's talk some Asian football, baby. Let's go. Game of the tournament with mm. Iraq facing off against Jordan in a 3-2 shootout that saw goals back and forth back and forth drama all around in this game i'm still i'm still buzzing from the hype oh, of that game i'm still dude. buzzing from the drama that we experienced bro what a match that sees the jordanians send the iraqis home after what was a perfect start to this tournament what a match dude an insane game drama filled towards the end of it and when this match finished i had 20 different emotions yeah. running through my body yeah. bro but let's get there. Let's go through let's, each yeah, emotion, we, yeah. man. I think so. Because there's just so much to unpack. The way this game started was ridiculous already. There was so much passion, so much aggression from both sides. Yeah. But was a, what was a really big point was, dude, the first 15 minutes, the entirety of the play was played in Jordan's half. They couldn't even get into the Iraqi defensive third. Iraq immediately starting off with a lot of physicality on and off the ball, but immediately, just from a neutral perspective, I knew this was going to be such a fascinating match because despite that fact, Jordan showed up with the same amount of physicality and aggression. Al Arab and Nasib were always putting a body on Ayman Hussein. Low key, they were shutting down Ayman Youssef. And it took a while for Ali Jassim to really get on the ball and do his usual dribble penetrations they had been so successful in throughout the entire group stage. So off the bat, even though Iraq had a lot of the ball, it was a really cagey physical affair for the first 20 minutes. And that's the thing about these knockout matches, bro, because you can try as hard as you want to try to read a team based off of their group stage appearances, but once the pressure is fully on and once the stakes are this high, you see teams either completely live up to the situation or completely falter. For example, like UAE yesterday. Mm. My goodness, did not show up for the occasion whatsoever. But 30 minutes into this match, 15 minutes into this match, you immediately felt that both of these teams, like yeah. how, how we had previewed actually, were there for the occasion and it was two heavyweights, two teams that were going to go all out for the victory here, competing at the highest level. It was an amazing spectacle that we were set to see and those first few minutes really established that leading into what was that first goal. Oh yeah, bro, so well said. That's what made this game just so fascinating because I was like, oh shit, you know, strap in, we're going to have a crazy yes, match yes. here, even though it was really Cajun it was nil nil but that's the thing Iraq had a lot of the ball but it was actually Jordan who were creating the more mm -hmm. meaningful chances in front of goal there was there was one chance over the top Olwan getting onto the end of the ball but couldn't quite settle it ended up kind of shagging his shot and then Yazan I think had a shot from outside the box testing the goalkeeper but finally it was a mistake a really mm -hmm. bad giveaway from Alamari who had been perfect up until this point giving it straight to Yazan who just turned on the accelerators oh and went God, straight dude. for goal the defense could not catch up to him he sits Jalal Hassan down and chips it over with a beautiful God, finish man. man beautiful hey I'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> what a celebration. Eat up, bro. Eat Eat up, up. man. And that goal, dude, once the dude, he turned on the Jets. Dude. He turned on the Jets, and it really reminded me of like a Jordanian Mbappe. The way he just received the ball, just and he just it. went, bro. The defenders could not catch up. And then the composure to fake the shot beforehand to drop the goalkeeper and then just chip it over. Crazy. Crazy celebrations ensuing that end up playing a factor in this match. And we see Jordan go up 1 0, man. What a scene. Yeah, in incredible scene. And Honestly, at that point, I was going for Iraq up until then, but seeing Jordan grow into this match, I was like, you know what? Let's go, baby. Yeah, Give me more goals. I don't care who wins this yeah. match. This was already the best game at the AFC Asian Cup. What a goal to start off this match, 1-0. Yeah, man. And then for the rest of the first half, I didn't really see Iraqs generate any sort of no. opportunities. All they could really do was just shoot from outside the box. I think they got two shots off, and that was it. For the most part, Jordan was great defensively, and they were really good at sending those long balls over to the top of the defense and really providing some dangerous opportunities for their offensive players Jordan played that first half damn near perfect bro yeah. and it was in the second half where we saw a completely different 
I guess, face from both these teams with just goals galore ensuing. Yeah, dude. Going into that halftime, I was really curious to see how both teams were going to shape up coming into the second half. Jordan with a nice 1-0 lead. Were they going to be able to keep it up? But Iraq have shown to be a really good side, probably one of the best sides at this tournament. So only being down one goal... I was hoping that Iraq would come out with just a little bit more vigor, Mm -hmm. a little bit more force. And dude, that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Because I would say for the next 20, 25 minutes to start the second half, it was all Iraq. But unlike the first half, they started to generate more chances. They started to win those 50-50 battles more often in that midfield. And more so too, Jordan started to look a little tired, yeah. actually. Yep. The defense weren't as aggressive. They weren't closing down as quickly. And honestly, I think that just hyped up this Iraqi side more and more because you could tell a goal was coming. Mm-hmm. And it finally did off of that nice little set piece corner kick going to the far side of the post. The defense of Suwad, I believe, sends it back, and it goes right in between center back and goalkeeper. Neither one can really get to it. And just like that, with what looked like a pretty simple goal, Iraq are back into it, but with the momentum to try to go up 2-1. Yes, and that's how you knew this game was about to be a fucking classic with that momentum shifting. Iraq showing up and showing their true potential. They tie the match. I mean, I lost my mind. Because I was just, from an objective point of view, I was like, man, we're about to get a crazy 30 minutes here. Yeah. My God, did we get that with the momentum continuing to shift yep. in Iraq's way. And just a few minutes later, getting a second goal behind the one and only Ayman Hussein. And dude, what a clinical finish. Yep. Brings it down beautifully, gently, kisses it to the ground. Yep. And then finishes it with such conviction Bottom corner, 2-1, just like that, using that momentum, scoring seven minutes later after equalizing. All of a sudden, the game has turned on its head. Iraq 2-1, and this is the Iraq that I knew would show up, that we knew would show up. Based off of all their group stage performances, they had a more complete squad. Unlike Jordan, they don't really tire out. They have a very exact game plan to execute. And then when you have guys like Ayman Hussein who can finish, who's on an insane run in this tournament, scoring his sixth goal then yeah, you can beat anybody. So coming down from a goal, switching it just like that, 2-1, I was like, all right, this is a championship winning side. Iraq, 2-1. And honestly, at that moment, I I didn't see Jordan coming back into it. I don't think anybody did because (laughs) you were me. (laughs) (laughs) Go for it. Because before we even kick off, after after that second goal is scored, a huge moment happened, man. Yeah, A really big moment with... Ali Reza Fagani, a very experienced ref, brandishing a second yellow card to Ayman Hussein, the goal scorer for, I guess, excessive celebration. I thought it was a combination of excessive celebration and also a bit of time wasting. Duration. Dude, it was long. It, it was, was, it was long. long. It was long. I thought it was duration at first, to mm-hmm. be honest. I was mm-hmm. like, he had been, like, he, there was one moment he was on the other side of the pitch, <laughs> then he finished the celebration on the exact oh, opposite side. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. But here's the thing, bro. <sighs> You can't send off a player for that. You can't do that. You can give him his first yellow, sure. You cannot give him his second yellow. This is where context has to come Mm -hmm. into play. This is where the referee has to understand the moment. Iraq just scored an insane goal to take the lead in a knockout game in the AFC Asian Cup, the biggest tournament that most Asian players ever get to play in. So, of course, that's going to be a little bit excessive. It's up to you to just be like, hey, let's get you. You got to go grab him. Don't give him a second yellow because sending off a player in a moment like this literally changes games. They have, there, and there's nothing at that point that Iraq can do because in that at that moment, there's 20, 25 minutes left in the game where Iraq now have a major disadvantage. It's one of the biggest twists I've ever seen in what is the story of football. Because outside of Iraq, if you focus in on Ayman Hussein and his narrative this whole tournament, rising to prominence on a global stage yeah. with the performance he's given every single game, becoming the leading goal scorer of this tournament. He's the tournament's golden boy, man. Yeah. The Iraqi Mesopotamian lion leader out here putting on these crazy, beautiful performances. I've fallen in love with how Ayman Hussein plays football. Same. It's a beautiful thing to see. And you could just feel it. It's like he's playing these games out there with a crown on his head because he's the, he's the prince to come for 
for this region. He's a great, great striker. Yeah. And every single game, he's showing out like no other. And then he has this massive, massive moment in this match specifically to give them the 2-1 lead off of an Erling Holland-like finish with his clinical ability. And it's cut short by the brutality of the footballing gods by this fucking second yellow card that sends him off, man. I could not believe it. I agree with you completely with the call and the decision. And I just can't believe that that's how the story ends, man. It's like it's like some Game of Thrones shit where they where they kill off the main character when you've just now started to root for him, man. Yeah. It's one of the most frustrating, unexplicable things I've ever seen in my life. And it ends up dictating the result of this game. And not just that, the journey of Iraq in this tournament. A journey that for a good while was looking like one of the most magical things I've ever seen. And that that's my problem, man, is... And I'll get to Jordan in a second because at the end of the day, I have nothing but praise for them. They have nothing to do with this. They have nothing to do with this. But this spoiled the game for me. Yeah. It spoiled it for me. The rest of the match, even though the momentum started to shift in Jordan's way and it was really cool to see, obviously just in the back of my mind, I was just like, what just happened? Because after the car was brandished, like the Jordanian players weren't even complaining. Iraq were just stunned. Jesus Kakas was like, what the hell just happened? And then you just see Iman Hussein going down the tunnel all of a sudden, yeah. and then and then the ball's on the other side of the pitch, just yeah. just like that. And this is not fair. I, I honestly I think this is very controversial. Uh, Fagani either needs to take refereeing lessons once again, or should not referee in a major situation ever again, because you have to take context in, into play here, man. I, I already said it, so I won't repeat it. But this is it's the wrong decision. Not only is it the wrong decision, it's just unjust. You cannot send off a player for a barely over excessive celebration. Now, if it was vulgar, yeah. if it was like truly, truly bad, excessive, yeah. or it got like violent in some way, or he runs into the stands, or he takes off his jersey, which is textbook, yeah. I could understand that. But in, in this case, I see no room for a second yellow to change the dynamic of this game. This is controversial in my opinion. And Iraq got robbed here, not by Jordan, not by anybody else other than Ali Reza Fagani himself. Yeah, but what I will say is that what ensued is what I would hope for from Jordan. Yeah. Whereas other teams would be put in the situation and end up disappointing. Jordan took advantage. Yeah. They took full advantage of this opportunity have. and they did a great job managing that pressure, putting it and piling it upon this Iraqi defense. And Iraq tried, bro. Their goalkeeper had some incredible saves down the stretch with Altamari shooting at him and yeah. all these opportunities doing a great job. But it was in stoppage time where Jordan finally was able to crack it and get their second goal, a stoppage time equalizer. With the Iraqi goalkeeper saving a shot, but then having it rebound over to the Jordanian center back who's right there to hit it into a wide open net. It's 2-2, absolute scenes. And the way the momentum shifted in that moment was so strong that it literally was worth two goals. Yeah. Because literally less than a minute after, Jordan takes the lead. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm keep it <laughs> With a gorgeous little cur curler from Nizar. And it was just ridiculous, bro. But you're right. It was the momentum of that first goal literally just continued on into the yeah. second. It was virtually the same play as if there was no whistle. They just kept going and yeah. got the victory through that. But even before that third goal from Jordan... With it being 2-2, there was just no way Iraq were yeah. going to win it. Even if it did go into extra time, 30 minutes down a man where Jordan were already hounding the Iraqi defense, there was just no way out for Iraq. It was just impossible. And this is where I really do applaud Jordan because when they did get that man advantage, they went all out. They started putting Al-Arab as another number nine, just two guys at the, at the back and everybody else right on that back line of Iraq, just trying to create mayhem, chaos, getting on the end of balls. You already said Altamari, trying to go ISO on the right-hand side, and getting shots off. And finally, it did pay dividends when Al-Arab got that equalizer. But what, what a what a go-ahead goal from Nizar, oh, man. Dude. What a gorgeous oh, goal. Nothing Iraq could do about it. He picked his spot. He said, we're not going to extra time. I'm ending it right now. <laughs> and what a goal. An absolute stunner, bro. I love the way he used the defender in front of him to kind of throw off the goalkeeper, almost use him as a shield yeah. to then curl the ball around him. And once the keeper got his eyes on it, it was too late. Ah, too it late. was too late. Too he late. just couldn't get to it. An absolute screamer to win it. Yeah, and man, once yeah. again, bro, scenes on scenes on scenes. I 
I mean, it was crazy what I saw from these Jordanian people, the way they celebrate, the way you could just hear the people yelling in the stadium. The atmosphere was top notch in this game, but this is heartbreak. This is heartbreak for the Iraqi side. And to just add on to that heartbreak, to, to add on to that cruelty that is this sport, they actually had a chance in the last minute with uh, Rebin Sulaka right in front of goal. Wit pass comes in, maybe yeah. a little too strong, and yeah. he just completely skies it on what's the last attempt, the last kick of the game. Yeah. And ultimately, I thought that just represented Iraq for this whole game at the end of the day. Just a battle with the footballing gods, a battle that saw them ultimately lose. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make this really, really clear. I'm, I'm bummed. Because we'll never know if Iraq could have defended the lead. We'll never know if Jordan would have come back fairly. Mm -hmm. um, again, not Jordan's fault. Uh, I, I just I, I hate moments like this, man. Mm. I, I hate it. I hate red cards when the call is subjective, yeah. right? I hate those. Because, you know, the way soccer is going right now is VAR is trying to take away the subjectivity, right? If it's offside by an inch, well, it's offside. It's purely objective. Honestly, they're trying to make uh, handballs also just purely objective. If it hits it, you know, in a certain portion, no matter what, it's going to be a penalty. But here, there's no VAR that could intervene because it was a purely subjective call from the ref. He's, he saw it and he was like, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him off. And I just can't have, I can't have that happen in a round of 16 or a knockout stage match, bro, because imagine if this happens again mm. for, uh, for any other team mm. like it's just not right. I'm sorry, man. I I really am. Iraq got bamboozled here. They got robbed. Um, but I, I I just also want to make this clear. Congratulations to Jordan because ultimately they played what was in front of them yep. and they went off. Yep. And they deserve to be in the top. Both of them. Both of these teams deserve to be in the quarterfinals. So we end up getting a crazy finish to this match. But yeah, I, I think Iraq just will feel definitely just a little unjust here with this result. Yeah, I feel like the tournament has kind of been built into this, though, because time Dude, after time, right. we mentioned on here, yes. there's been some soft calls being made. And what we saw today in this game, I mean, I think that's the epitome of a soft call, man. Like, that's yes. like, as soft as it gets, bro. It's fucking build a bear workshop type soft, man. Like, <laughs> this is one of the softest things I've ever seen, if it even falls into that category. So I agree with you, bro. The frustration is there completely for me yeah. as well, because like I said, that narrative, that story, what Iraq was capable of doing the players, the way this team was playing, everything just gets halted, comes to an end with what ends up being a really controversial refereeing decision. And specifically for me, man, I'm bummed that I, one, obviously, Eamon Hussein, that we won't get to see him again on this stage Dude, uh, this man. time around. But I, I can't believe how man. clinical he has been. Seriously, like yeah. you said earlier that he's become one of your favorite players here, same, man. Like, mm -hmm. his ability to finish, how physical he is in the box, he's a really damn good number nine. Really, I'll be really interested to see his career just from a club level now because yeah. he's a fantastic striker. Yeah. And then the other play that I would throw in there that, man, after watching his performance today, I was like, fuck, dude, I wish I could see him in the quarters, is Ibrahim Bayesh. I love good. this guy, man. Skill on the ball, but also offers security, relief. I'm going to miss the guy. I'm going to miss him because every time he was on the ball, every time I saw him on the screen, I was just happy. I was just excited to see what he could do, what he could provide to his teammates, and a great player overall. You could say this for a good number of Iraqi players because this really was a, a really magical team that I think was just looking for something more special here but ends up getting shafted. And with Jordan now going to the quarterfinals with a matchup against Tajikistan, I believe, and with the hopes and shots of making, maybe making it to the semifinals and deep in this tournament. Yeah, for, for Jordan, again, they played what was in front of them, and they did oh so well. I love their offensive line. Olwan, Yazan, Altamari, Almardi. There's, there's so much pace in that side. But then you couple that offensive aggression with really good physical defense. Jordan, I think, will fancy themselves against Tajikistan for sure. And Jordan's on a really good run themselves. For Iraq, man, I think there's a lot of hope, dude. Based off of these performances here in the Asian Cup, I think you can be really excited to see what Iraq can do for the 2026 World Cup cycle. Honestly, I expect Iraq to go deep in qualifying, and straight up, this team is World Cup yeah, caliber, 100%. So if they keep Jesus Casas, who seems to be the guy right now to lead this Iraqi team, the, the 11 that they have on the pitch is so talented, also so committed and determined to Casas' tactics. This team 
will play at the World Cup if they just stick together. This is a very talented Iraqi oh, side. They could be coming over to us, man. We might be able to get. We might be able yeah. to see them again over here in the states. It'd be bro. dope, and it'd be dope, man, to catch them in live and see it in person. I agree. It'd be amazing to see and. I do think it's going to happen with the quality that they showed throughout these four matches. For me, at the end of the day, watching it from an objective point of view, I am ultimately going to prioritize drama when it comes to my match ratings. <laughs> and given that this is one of the craziest games I've ever seen with an insane two-goal comeback in the last five minutes, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. I'm going 9 out of 10. The only way this could have gone higher is if the controversial refereeing decision wasn't controversial and if this was like a semifinal or final match. But for me... The best game of the tournament in terms of entertainment. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I think it's the first 9 I give for these match ratings. I just put myself in the shoes of the Iraqis, and that red card is going to mm. piss me off, mm. man. And I'm sorry. I can't. I dock points when sure. something truly controversial sure. happens. I'm giving this one a 7.5. But yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, seriously, man, imagine if this was Mexico, dude. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> no, I get it. No, come on, man. I get it, bro. But it, no, I, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, oh, uh, we got I mean, undone. I get it, bro. The, the Uruguay-Ghana game, I'm sure Ghana's think that game was a 3 out of 10, bro, from the World <laughs> Cup where the handball happened. But yeah. objectively, that was one of the greatest games I've ever seen, man. Okay, yeah. Now, nah, but I'm just, for some reason, I think I'm, I've, I've connected myself too much with I think Iraq. you did. You, yeah. got, you got personal with it. I got real fine. personal. You no, can, and I, I did get personal so with it. So are you going to give your first maybe five, four of the tournament? Three? No, no, because the game was so, so good. I would have given it a nine, but I'm docking a point and a half. Okay. So 7.5. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. And to follow up this heart attack of a game in Iraq, Jordan, we had Qatar, the host nation, facing off against Palestine in the round of 16. A game that sees Qatar come back after being down 1-0 to Palestine and winning 2-1. Let's have some fun here. How would you summarize this game in one sentence? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Is that the word? That can be it, bro. That can be it. Qatar outdo the Palestinians in the second half and in doing so are on the way to you know, maybe surprisingly retain their title. Damn. Wow. Mm. Little newspaper headline there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Wow. That's okay. 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 Let me, let me take that. Let me absorb that. Let me take that in. You think this gave you more confidence in the Qatari team? Absolutely. So I've been slightly critical of Qatar throughout their entire group stage. Now, they did have a fairly easy group when you compare them to the other ones. But for me, my biggest gripe on Qatar was I just didn't see a lot of conviction when they would go forward. They looked comfortable in midfield. They never really got tested defensively due to their opponents in Group A. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just thought that they were kind of cruising through each game. And a lot of their wins were pretty narrow. You know, the one against China took a crazy Al Haido's corner kick goal. Beautiful goal. And the one against Tajikistan, well, to break the deadlock, took a refereeing weird little, you know, yeah. play. And so for Qatar, I just hadn't been impressed, even though when you look at the numbers, they looked incredible because they hadn't conceded a goal, yeah. you know, and they were, you know, on paper, technically dominating the group. They won every single game. But I just wasn't fully convinced. And the thing is, the way that this first half went, it was the same thing. Still wasn't convinced. Qatar had a lot of the ball in this first half. Akram Afif, though, has been honestly really a revelation in this tournament. He's in his prime. He's always been their go-to guy offensively alongside Al Moaz Ali. But the amount of freedom that he's been yeah. playing with is I actually kind of yeah, crazy. I didn't think he'd be this good. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, same. Like, I knew he was good. He looks so good. best player, but I didn't think he was capable of these things. Like, not just that, but the confidence when he's on the ball. Like, <laughs> when they zoom in on his face, like, he knows he's the best player out there amongst all 22 players. That's not what I thought he would evolve into, man. Like, same. this is a great... This is like, he's got the attitude, he's got the mentality, yeah. and then lately he's just been backing it up as well with the numbers he's putting up and yeah. assists and goals and his impact on the pitch, man. I agree. Yeah, he's going off. And <laughs> it, 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 it's so nice to see because it is pretty rare when a coach gives a player full mm. license to roam, and that is the exact thing that has been granted to Akram Afif by Tintin Marquez. And honestly, we're getting treated to it because every single time he's clearly the the best player on the pitch and it's just so fun to watch but what was crazy is that in this first half even though Qatar had a lot of the ball they're they still really pedestrian man mm -hmm. they really mm -hmm. didn't create a lot of chances and it was actually Palestine who had the more meaningful chances there was a shot from outside the box there was Abu Warda on the left hand side who had a nice side foot 
yeah. uh, testing Barsham. And then finally, they forced Basam al Rawi to give the ball away, go straight to Dabag, who's been fantastic these last two games. And he puts home a really nice finish. Palestine go up 1 0 within the first, what, 25, 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah, it was, a, it was actually really nice for them to, to have that moment, I think. Yeah. That was a great thing to see. And I mean, I, I saw the warning signals go off the moment that goal happened. I was like, okay, Qatar's down 1 0 now. We've been critical of them, saying that they haven't really faced off against good competition. Yeah. Here's a Palestine team that isn't the best side in Asia, but they're formidable. They're solid, and they're on a little bit of a run here coming off of a really big win in just their last match, and they're down 1-0 to them. So if anything, my like worries, my concerns were affirmed in that moment. I was like, oh, Qatar's, Qatar's not that team then. Yeah. Or they will either come back from this matchup, they will come back and get the result here and prove otherwise. And when you're in doubt, when you're looking for somebody to step up, when you're looking for a sort of connection to be made, Look nowhere else than <laughs> Akram Afif and Al Haidos off of a corner kick, Good bro. Lord, Good man. Lord, man. It shouldn't be that successful. But here we go now, two games in a row yeah. off of a crazy corner kick set piece that they have done, I would, I would assume, in training multiple times. Ball comes fizzing into that center box, and Al Haidos is right there to meet it wide open and scores a beautiful goal. Scores a goal that gets deflected in, and they tie the match 1-1 with this partnership, this duo at the, at the center of it. It's ridiculous, man. Akram Afif gets yet again another assist. And it's just crazy that for two games in a row, it's a special designed corner kick. You yeah. know, like that's just nuts. And it's the same connection. Afif to Al Haidos. What a goal. And Qatar, honestly, not, not get lucky, but they definitely use their fortunes here to equalize the game right at the end of the first half. Palestine just kind of switch off here. They get undone by the special set piece. 1-1 Qatar going into the half, feeling good. But I still, I was still wary because, as you just said, Palestine have been formidable. So yeah. I was very curious to see if they could keep it up, continue it. And I was curious to see if we were going to see Qatar show up. But in this second half, from the get-go, I saw the best Qatar performance that I've seen probably in a couple years, honestly. Because they just absolutely dominated it. And they didn't even need to go that far into the second half because they were able to draw a penalty in the second minute of the second half. Akram Afif kind of dancing on the left side, putting in a beautiful little slip through ball to Al Ali, who uses his athleticism to get to it first. Mm -hmm. Clever little touch there to draw the penalty. And then who steps up? Well, yeah. Akram Afif, the yep. golden boy right now, puts it straight down the middle, doesn't even think twice. It's 2-1, Qatar take the lead, and... Honestly, they just dominate no, the yeah. rest of the yeah, half. There's no other highlight or anything that like stood out the rest of this match because it was just pure dominance from Qatar, just sealing the deal and going up 2-1 to get this result. I mean, for me, the takeaway here is a good one because this was their toughest test so far, mm. being down 1-0 and having to come back and showing that they are capable of doing that and doing so in a really dominant fashion. This was a huge result to just continue that momentum. Their fourth win in a row now, and they'll be set to face off against either Uzbekistan or Thailand, I believe. Yeah. And so, like you mentioned at the very beginning of this, uh, of this segment, Qatar now can consider themselves as an actual contender for the title because of this road, their path that they're shaping for themselves with the momentum they've created, with the matchups that they're soon to have, and the star players that they have at this moment. I think Qatar is a team worth considering as a potential threat for the title. Absolutely, man. Based off of this second half, if they can just refine that in this next quarterfinal match, I will not argue against that they could make it to the semifinal. They have the talent. That's uh, We've always known that. For me, it's just been about executing that talent to, into something meaningful. But I saw that in, the, in that second half. And we've seen it throughout the entire tournament when Akram Afif is on the ball. So they have that X factor. This guitar team can definitely do something as far as retaining this title and honestly should back themselves to at least get to the semifinals. Not that it'll be easy, whether it's Thailand or Uzbekistan, that's going to be a crazy quarterfinal matchup, mm -hmm. but it is there for Qatar if they really want to go for it. I'm just glad that they were able to put in ultimately what was a good performance here against a decent Palestine side who should honestly be very proud of themselves yeah. to make it this far into the tournament, to play as well as they've had against the UAE, Hong Kong, and in that first half against Qatar getting the lead too. Palestine have played really, really good football. I just think in that second half, they're just a little tired maybe, you know, and just a, a bit of stamina, maybe a little bit of inexperience came into play in that second half. But if they can keep this core group of players, and honestly, I think the coach has them pretty well drilled, I think Palestine can actually continue to grow 
I, I, there's a lot of room to grow for sure. But I remember back in 2019, the Palestine side was kind of like in, just in a bit of limbo. They had a, a really bad tournament. But this is a success, in my opinion, for Palestine. A, a huge success. So build off of this core group because you, you got some good players. Dabag, Batat, for example. I think this Palestine side can actually grow and maybe not qualify for the next World Cup, but at least improve on the World Cup qualifying performances. And you know, maybe within the next 8, 12 years, they can grow into something like uh, truly good. Yeah, if, I think if you're Palestinian, you're leaving this performance very proud, yeah. leaving this tournament very proud of this team. If you're a Qatari, then you're excited. That's how you leave this game. <laughs> yeah. Very, very excited. Match rating for this one. This game ended 2-1. I, I mean, there wasn't that many dangerous opportunities None. throughout the game. Kind of what happened, happened, and that was it. So I'm actually going to go 6.5 on this one. But honestly, it was a breath of fresh air after uh, the crazy match that we saw to start off the day. This was nice to just kind of relax and sit back for a little bit and just enjoy this Qatari dom dominance, honestly. Yeah, I gave it the same exact thing, dude. 6.5. Not a lot of gold mouth action. But yeah, a good performance from Qatar. The next matchup is going to be, I think, way, way harder, though. So we'll see if Qatar can once again step up to an even higher level. Tomorrow's games, we have Uzbekistan versus Thailand and Saudi Arabia versus South Korea. Two really, really good matches that we will be reviewing tomorrow. Guys, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Five stars on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We'll see you guys very soon for what expects to be a jam-packed, drama-filled match day. Peace. Thank you.